we're now going to look at some distance learning innovations and other ways that different technologies can be used in online instruction. Some things that we're all familiar with are, things, are technologies such as PowerPoint, which everyone's familiar with how to use, it's easy to distribute over the internet, and students are comfortable creating presentations to share information. You also have course management systems, and the one that we're most familiar with is WebCT or Blackboard. These are very robust enterprise solutions, and because they're so large and established, these products cost the colleges a lot of money. And so there are alternatives, such as Moodle, which are freely available products that do the same thing as Blackboard or WebCT. It's just that the support community is peer institutions that help each other out when they have support problems instead of being able to call Blackboard or WebCT for problems. So there's a trade-off for the colleges. Another technology that's used is interactive television, or ITV, which is what we're all using right now as well. Some colleges had decided to share their resources for things such as laboratories. So if you have students who are spread out on various geographic locations, they can share research laboratory space to do courses such as chemistry or biology. And the students benefit from having access to these facilities, and the colleges get to share the resource and the expense. This helps, of course, open access issues with online learning. Another technology that colleges are starting to implement is podcasting. With 80% of the college students having access to portable media devices, it's very likely that our community college students will soon have some access, be that their mobile phone, they may actually have a mobile media player, their laptop computer or their home PC, they have access to these technologies. So institutions can distribute course notes and lectures directly to the student to supplement their course content. Some of the products that help us in distributing these podcasts are Apple's iTunes University, or also there are opportunities for colleges to have their local networks distribute the content directly to the student without having to use Apple and their contract services. An example of this being used in the university setting is Duke University. They recently distributed 1,800 iPods to their undergraduate students for them to use for these purposes, for gathering lectures, recording their lectures, and, and helping them with their studies. Some emerging technologies that can be used with distance learning coursework courses are things such as Second Life. And the technical term is massively multiplayer online role-playing games. And this is a screenshot out of Second Life. And this is a real-time environment where each of these people that you see in this picture are actual people. These are called avatars. And in this world, you walk around or you can fly around. Um, and you can either talk to people using text chat or voice chat. It's free to download, and there's no cost to actually use the service. Now, if you wanted to, say, build a building, you have to pay for that, but that's a whole other conversation. But what instructors could do is they could actually hold their classes in these Second Life environments and build laboratory experiments using tools, authoring tools inside of Second Life to, to give examples. Uh, an example of this is uh, NOAA has built a weather station inside of Second Life where you can actually watch tsunamis take place and, and see these weather experiments that they do. So there's actually some legitimate use, I believe, for Second Life and distance learning, just as a collaborative tool, if nothing else. Video game technologies are expanding every year. Um, most of our students now are familiar with these technologies. The average game player is 33 years old, and the average community college student is 29 to 33, depending upon who you talk to. And as you can see from these examples, the, the hardware that these pictures are, are showing are a Xbox 360 controller with, as you can see, a keypad attached to the controller. This is a wireless Bluetooth headset and then you have a, can a video camera that attaches to the game console. So in theory, you could actually hold video chat conversations 
using a game console in in the you know, comfort of your living room, or you could have students text or IM to collaborate uh, using the video game controller. Social computing and Web 2.0 are, I think, really uh, showing the possibility for use in distance learning. Things such as Google Docs or Google Documents, where you can collaborate in real time with spreadsheets or presentations or Word documents or text documents, really have uh, the possibility of revolutionizing collaborative learning. Blogs and wikis, most people are familiar with what those are. Those are just web logs, web journals, um, but you can have students keep track of their projects. So if you're doing portfolio learning, you can do your portfolio learning online instead of having to keep Word documents and a string of Word documents. And I, I really think that as you, as you put all these technologies together, the opportunity exists to do some really interesting things with collaborative learning and to break down those barriers that distance learning can create when you have very impersonal web conversations with your students or, or back and forth with your student groups. Here's an example of using different technologies in a collaborative environment. What you're about to see is a meeting that uh, I held with some of the people in my department We're using Skype, which is a free video conferencing technology, PC to PC video conferencing, and we're collaborating using Google Docs. And so as we're talking back and forth, we're actually um, both myself and Amory, who's the person in the foreground there, we're both editing this spreadsheet working on a timeline. So imagine your students using the same kind of technology to collaborate on different tasks that you might give them and, and how that is so much more enriched than just a simple discussion board or a, a text chat or, or email. Teams getting started. I don't know that there's going to be a need for me to be down and dirty with with this group. And on the peripheral, quite possibly, they'll say how many you know people are doing this or how many you know whatevers. Or, you know, that's where I think I'll come into play. That's that's where it's going to happen. Yeah. And we'll probably have we'll probably need your advice on how to create um, some kind of online submission. For that. Right. Uh, Taking the different technologies that are available to instructors and to students, either in the education market or in the consumer market, and putting those together, I think really gives a lot of opportunities for instructors to be very creative and, and to use those different tools to create experiences that students will get a lot more out of than simple text chats or discussion boards. I want to thank you for your, your time this evening. And also, some of you may be wondering how we actually pulled this off. Um, just a couple of software tools um, that are readily available to most instructors. PowerPoint 2007 was used, obviously, to create the presentation. A software package called Camtasia Studio was used to do the voice and video overlay and to put the little picture in picture down the bottom of the screen. And then I used Windows Movie Maker to thread all this together to make it to a, a smaller file for distribution over the internet. This is an example of different tools put together for instructors to use. This could have been distributed over YouTube, this could have been distributed over a podcast, and so take these kind of examples and move those into the classroom, you can see where there are a lot of opportunities for instructors to do some really cool things in the future. Thanks for your time.